Our planet is bleeding green. Nearly half of Earth's land surface has already turned to desert or stands on the brink of it. Vast stretches where nothing grows, where water has vanished, where life itself seems impossible. But in the heart of China's unforgiving wastelands, one man refused to accept defeat. Over three decades, he orchestrated something extraordinary planting hundreds of millions of trees, releasing millions of rabbits into barren sand, and constructing a solar farm so massive it's visible from space. The United Nations called it a global blueprint for fighting desertification. But how does releasing rabbits into a desert save it? The answer is more brilliant than you'd ever imagine. Welcome to the Kubuki Desert, China's seventh largest desert spanning an area roughly the size of Massachusetts. Located in Inner Mongolia, this is one of the harshest environments on Earth. Winter temperatures plummet to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, with winds so brutal they cut like razors. Summers are scorching, turning the sand into a burning sea. But this wasn't always a wasteland. Decades ago, this land supported farms, villages, and grasslands. Rivers flowed, communities thrived. Then, desertification began its relentless march. Winds intensified, vegetation died, sand swallowed entire towns and roads. Dunes towering over 20 stories high buried thousands of acres of fertile farmland. By the mid-20th century, the Chinese government launched massive reforestation campaigns. They built windbreaks, banned grazing, drilled wells deep into the earth. Nothing worked. The desert kept expanding, consuming everything in its path. Enter Wang Wenbao, a former schoolteacher from Inner Mongolia who became known as the Desert King. He wasn't born into wealth or power. Every day, he biked through sand dunes just to reach his classroom. Sometimes the wind buried his bicycle halfway. Sand filled his lungs. But instead of escaping the desert, he made a decision that would change everything. If I can't escape the desert, he declared, I'll make it profitable. Starting with a small salt company in the late 1980s, Wang invested everything he had, borrowed heavily, and began what many considered an impossible experiment. He spent hundreds of millions of dollars transforming over 1,400 square miles of wasteland. Critics called him delusional, authorities dismissed him as a dreamer. But Wang understood something others didn't. He wasn't just fighting the desert, he was redesigning it. And then came the rabbits. Not just any rabbits, but over 4 million Rex rabbits, a French breed prized for their luxurious fur. These weren't released randomly into the wild. They were integrated into a carefully managed ecological system. Rex rabbits are extraordinary creatures. Each female can produce up to 25 litters annually, with survival rates exceeding 95%, even in extreme heat and cold. They require minimal water, thrive on dry vegetation, and reproduce rapidly. But their real value isn't their fur or meat, it's their waste. Rabbit manure is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the exact nutrients desert sand lacks. When it falls to the ground, it transforms sterile sand into fertile hummus. And here's the genius. Rex rabbits can't digest grass seeds. Every time they defecate, they're essentially planting seeds wrapped in natural fertilizer ready to sprout when the rains come. But rabbits alone couldn't survive in the desert. Wang needed to create an entire ecosystem. That's where the willow trees came in. Willows are remarkable. Their roots can extend over 300 feet underground, reaching deep water reserves and anchoring the sand. Wang planted more than 300 million of them, creating a living green wall thousands of miles long. Young willow shoots became food for the rabbits. The rabbits produced nutrient-rich manure around the trees. The trees fed the rabbits. The rabbits fed on the soil. The soil nourished the trees, a perfect closed loop where nothing was wasted. Scientists estimate this system produces over five tons of organic matter per acre annually, transforming sand into farmland in just three to five years. Within a decade, Wind speeds dropped by 90% and over 15 million tons of sand were held in place each year. Wang didn't stop there. He hired hundreds of bulldozers and workers laboring 18-hour days to flatten dunes and construct massive windbreak fences. 
In just five years, over 1,200 square miles of desert turned green. Families who had fled decades earlier returned home. Within 10 years, the region supported 4.5 million Rex rabbits, generating over $75 million annually and lifting more than 10,000 families out of poverty. A family could start with just a few thousand dollars and quadruple their investment within a year. Then Wang did something even more audacious. He brought solar energy into the desert. The Zhanggar Solar Farm, equipped with nearly 200,000 panels arranged in the shape of a galloping horse, became the world's largest energy art installation, recognized by Guinness World Records. Annually, it generates enough electricity to power a city of 400,000 people. But the panels do more than produce energy. They reduce wind speeds by 50%, creating shade where grass can grow underneath. Rabbits, sheep, and geese graze beneath them, stabilizing the soil and preventing erosion. By 2022, this project alone had saved over 760,000 tons of coal and offset nearly 2 million tons of carbon dioxide, equivalent to planting 80 million trees. The results have been staggering. Between 2010 and 2020, Kubachi's ecological economy generated over $10 billion, making it Asia's most profitable green restoration model. Wildlife populations have quadrupled since 1990. Species that vanished completely, desert foxes, wild deer, and migratory birds have returned. Groundwater levels have risen by over six feet in 20 years. Over a hundred native plant species now flourish where only sand once existed. But here's where the story takes a darker turn. Thousands of miles away in Australia, rabbits became an ecological nightmare. In the mid-1800s, just 24 European rabbits were introduced for sport hunting. Within 50 years, their population exploded to over a billion. They devoured vegetation, destroyed root systems, and turned nearly two-thirds of Australia's grasslands into desert. The government built fences spanning thousands of miles, released diseases, and even conducted mass exterminations. Nothing stopped them. So why are rabbits saviors in China, but destroyers in Australia? The answer is control. In Kubachi, rabbits are never wild. They're part of a managed closed-loop system, producing value while restoring the land. Still, the Kubachi model isn't without controversy. Some environmentalists argue that media coverage has exaggerated the role of rabbits, crediting the real success to government investment and advanced land management. Others worry about ecological risks. Excess rabbit manure can cause nitrogen pollution, alter soil acidity, and contaminate groundwater. In some pilot areas, algae blooms have appeared near fertilizer ponds. Yet the United Nations saw enough promise to recognize Kubachi as a global model in 2011, and by 2019, it became an internationally certified land restoration demonstration center. Today, Kubachi's story is spreading worldwide. In southern Spain, once the breadbasket of the Roman Empire, rainfall has dropped 40% in 30 years. Rivers have dried up. Farmland is cracking. Nearly 75% of Spain's land now faces desertification. Learning from Kubachi, Spain launched a bold restoration plan planting millions of olive trees and native grasses, building solar farms under which crops grow, managing soil and climate as one living system. From a land buried under sand, Kubachi has become a symbol of hope. It proves that humanity doesn't have to conquer nature. We can learn to work with it. As one exploration ends, new questions begin to unfold. If you found this investigation meaningful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay part of our growing community. And when you're ready, the next story awaits. The haunting mystery of thousands of sheep left on a barren island with no grass and what happened 75 years later. It's a revelation you won't want to miss.